was the team fighting rather than trying to match on the side lanes. But I think that with the misfortune still open, it's something that Han Summer can look for if they want to try and get him on an AD carry to potentially carry with. But with things like the Jin, you imagine the LWX would be more than happy to answer it. But it does seem that Larson is saying, well, I'm down to play the Silas side of this matchup. Last time we yeah. saw Duin B on the uh, the Twisted Fate. He uh, had a lot of damage in the later game fights. And as you say, no. <laughs> like, there's, it, picking... It's not that Inspired cannot play Fiddle 6. We've seen him play it well. No way but picking Fiddle 6 at this point blind with no enemy jungle already locked in. But he's... He's, he's using the fear early. You know what I mean? It, I mean, as a doing. Nocturne main, you know a lot about fear. <laughs> he's like, obsessed with it. He's just paranoid. Uh, but uh, yes, MF will in the end be the lock here for Han Summer. So a very strong AD carry, great duelist. Has a lot of damage in later game fights if you can connect with your bullet time. Because we've seen a few of those going wide. Jace locked in here for Nuggery on the oh, top wow. lane. So it is full that. comfort for FBX. Like, look at this, a full top side focused draft. It is what we've been seeing while well, dominate a lot so far today. And I think that it is a very effective one. It's a clean one because they're challenging Oduamna here. They're saying, what have you got? What have you got in the top side of the map to really allow you to try and stop this? Because they haven't locked in the jungle yet. They haven't locked in top lane yet. And if they do lock in this Rakan, which they will, they can now ban out supports as an answer. They can mitigate what Crisp has an access to. Uh, they may choose to get rid of something like the Rel, something he has gone for, give you that engage. I just feel like LWX is looking at either a Kai'Sa or a Jin, and I feel like Jin is what he's primarily going to go for to try and synergize more with that poke-style comp that FBX have gotten themselves with the Jace and with the Twisted Fate and the Rapid Fire Cannon later. Well, Rogue agree with the AD carry focus at least for these bands. They'll take away a Felios. FBX can look up towards that top side if they so desire. Can look to the jungle as well. Could say, hey, inspired. I'm not going to give you something like the Xin Zhao. Uh, I'm going to give you, I mean, Talon or Graves as well. Yeah, there is the Graves ban by FPX. Rogue have a wealth of options at their fingertips in terms of what to ban. But, uh, it's a single ban that could sometimes be the difference in games like this, making sure that you really set your lanes up for success. I like the Ezreal ban personally, just removes LWX's ability to be safe. This to me suggests more of the Jin. And the fiddle is going to be banned away. They are not letting him have it again. The respect has come through. Now, part of me thinks that Rogue will consider a Camille here. It's not the best matchup in 2Js, but you do know that it will eventually outscale. Oh, wait. Actually, this fits way more with the Rogue style. Weak side up towards the top side of the map. A potential winning matchup, but instead they're going to go for the cannon. It was Odo that was playing this side of the matchup. They're now flipping it around. And remember that it was Odo in lane. It was going pretty even. But later on, Odo was able to get the better of Nogari in the straight up 1v1. And he was massively impactful on the, the Jace with the amount of poke that he offers. But now it's very clear that Rogue is going all in on the team fight. To me, they're looking at a Jarvan final rotation right now. Gives you some early game setup. Also gives you a very reliable engage. But perhaps they want to put Inspired on something that can have a little bit more of a carry performance. With the Kiana still up and available, that is always something that they can go for and would combinate well, combinate? Combine well <laughs> with their composition as FBX round out their draft with a very solid and reliable bot lane. Crisp gets himself Thresh, LWX gets himself Jin, makes sense with the context of their comp, and also provides that extra bit of safety thanks to the land. Yeah, of course, Thresh good into the Lacan as well. Definitely helps you out in the laning phase. And now Rogue, a long discussion as to this jungler and is going to be the job and good prediction there, Vedius few low mobility lanes for Inspired to play around, but so far at this tournament, I think a lot of people would agree, Jarvan has been underwhelming at best most of the times he's been played. Well, pick 22% of the time, win percentage 40%, and Inspired is, he was massive in their last game against FPX. Uh, thanks to the amount of damage and the flanks that he was able to find on that fiddle six, you're not going to have that same type of carry performance on a Jarvan. It's going to be much harder. It's going to rely on the solo laners and the engage, but I will say Rogue have a lot of engage. They have a lot of tools to start fights, and FPX, obviously their early game plan is to play very much towards the top side of the map. They can look to try and attack side lades with the global that they have on Twisted Fate and try and play through Noggery. The question is, what will this early game look like? Because I think this whole game could be decided by how the early game plays out. It, it's... We've seen both sides struggle when it comes to getting through the early game. 
and I think it's going to determine a lot. What will happen? A lot of comfort on both sides, in particular for FBX. I think that anyone that's followed FBX will look at this draft and say, this definitely looks like an FBX draft to me. So let's see how they make things happen. Will they be able to turn it around? The tiebreakers are going to start. The winner will go up against C9. The winner will still stand a chance of making it to the world's quarter final stage. And the loser will end up going home. Their world runs, their world run will end. FPX previous world champions against Rogue, a number three seed from the LEC. Both regions with a lot of pride on the line. I think, speaking as someone from Europe, there's been a disappointing world so far, but if Rogue are able to make this run, it will be all the brighter. LPL, FPX, especially on, on the other side of the coin, will want this win. Like, to, to get knocked out by NA, to get knocked out by EU is just not something you want to see. And I'm sure the Billy Billy for, uh, forums will be full of a lot of copy pasta after this one if they end up losing. That's definitely true. Oh, I'm starting with the E there. That's it, Jace already skilling in the queue. Trimby going to sweep out the bot side. and A lot on the line of this game. No more second chances. No more opportunities. This is it. We haven't said it today. Do you want to say, have say the words? Tell me. Would you say it's make or break? It is. <laughs> it's make or break <laughs> for both of these Minion teams. Good one, man. First time to song. Burn it all down. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the singing lessons have been going well. So. <laughs> uh, right. So, Viego is starting on the bot side of the map, but it doesn't look like that Tian is going to get a leash. Whereas Trimby, is this some very clever ploy? Surely Crisp is going to check this. You can see his hesitancy <laughs> to check the brush. Oh, okay. I mean, so they might not when MF walks into the lane. But they don't know Trimby's in there. Yeah, so my thought is they see Han Summer walking to that second bush. Trimby has been hiding in yes, his first yes, bush yes, and now yes, can look yes. for the fight. No, no. Single auto attack was less exciting than perhaps <laughs> we've built it up to be, but I do like that little bit from Rogue. A tiny bit of extra harass as Tian started down towards the bottom side. Neither jungler getting a leash. So, yep, both junglers starting on the bot side and that pathing up towards stop. Typically, Cannon will get priority against the Jace early on. Um, so it kind of makes sense to me that Inspired is passing up towards the top side, whereas Tian just doing a full clear he might look for a potential gank, or maybe he'll leverage the fact that they will have mid prior to try and contest this top side scuttle, something to keep an eye on. But as I say that, we can also see Noggery getting the first push, knock up from Trimby. Early play there from Crisp. Trimby knowing that he could go in with the grand entrance. LWX trying to trade back into this. Both AD carries low. LWX below half HP. Down to about 150 as the Ignite does tick. Yeah, I'm a little surprised. Like, oh, the level two. Crisp will have play back up here, so can use nice. it. Nice. Trimby dodges away from it. LWX wow. now has two back. A lot going on in these trades very early on between the two. I was surprised that Han Summer didn't just turn around and hit LWX because while he was reloading, there was a window there where I thought that Han Summer and Trimmy really could have done some serious damage. But let's see if they expect this. All summoners are up and available. If if Inspired goes to this gank, he's, he's likely going to lose his top side. You give um, up so much. Yeah, you do give up a lot. And look at this ward as well, dropped by Doinby in the bottom river. Not going to spot out the Jarvan. As a good trade comes out from Nogri in the top side. Yeah, Nogri really putting the hurt down onto Odawamne, who's down to half HP. Inspired now working his way up towards the top side of the map. A, a full camp and a half behind because of the little bit of time that he spent down in that bottom lane. And uh, for the moment, no real advantages gained. Tian will be able to get this first scuttler of the game. And I wonder if Inspired will just give up both scuttles, allowing the FPX jungler to get ahead. Well, so the thing is they don't know where Inspired is, so they don't know if he's topside. And it wouldn't be unreasonable to assume that he passed towards bot uh, simply because that's where he has his prior. So they can make that safe assumption right now, but Jarvan is here, Odo forced to flash. He's gonna go back in, looking for the stuns here underneath the tower, Tien. Able to get away from this one, Odo Omne still alive, and here comes Inspired. Nuggery dodges to the side, but still gets knocked up. Nuggery low, 100 HP on him, Inspired will flash. Martial Cadence for the kill. Tien now trying to trade underneath this tower, but Odo in Inspired. Oh, there's the TP coming in from Doinby. They're looking to keep this play going. Spectral Moor gets the stun. Tian possesses Odo Omne and helps Doinby get the second kill. Beautiful TP from Doinby to make that work out nicely for FPX. And Larson didn't have mana to join the fight, which means that even if he did invest his TP, he likely wouldn't have been able to offer anything anyway. So really well played from Tian. Let's see another trade in bot lane. Yeah, Trimby there smartly waiting out the play so he could dance back with the E. 
That's what you want to do on the Rakan in this sort of trading. And bot lane definitely going in Rogue's favor so far in these short burst windows. But a big lead now developed for Tian in the jungle. 1-0-1. One, one. And alongside that, Doinby getting a kill. And it's a strategy that many teams in this group have tried to utilize, shutting down Odoamne in the early game. It wasn't even a stacked wave, but they know that Odoamne is very squishy. And Odoamne, I think, in this situation, just wants to try and leverage the tower. But he takes so much damage actually getting back underneath the tower, as we see here fighting bot. Oh, Tian was lanterned in there. They're going to get the root onto Trimby. The Ignite is sticking. His spider is here as well. Tian's going to keep trading in. Blade of the Ruin King doing a little bit of damage, but. Inspired doesn't actually have to go for this, just able to force the FPX bot lane away. So the problem with Inspired trying to force a play there would have been that all of the summoner spells are still up for FPX, except for the Ignite, of course. Um, but also, because Trimby can't re-engage due to his HP, that would have been a two versus three. And because Inspired doesn't have Flash, the moment he commits to that, he is not getting back out again. So not risking the numbers disadvantage there, he decides not to overcommit. And fortunately for Rogue, they do not lose anything off the back of it anyway. So FPX with a very small goal lead for the time being, largely building up towards the top side of the map. But I think that Doonby is going to be pretty happy with the kill that he's currently sitting on. Noguri will be uh, Noguri will be pretty happy with the fact that he's sitting on a serrated duck as well. That lethality already stacking up on the Jace. Let's see, Doonby and Larson trading XP in the mid lane. Both the top lane is pretty even. Both the jungle is pretty even. Say a quarter of a level between the two of them. So pretty even across the board. Only 200 gold the difference between these two teams. And I did ask our stats team ready to have a quick historical look at the records of all these regions in tiebreakers internationally. LEC sitting at 10 and 3. They've actually only ever lost tiebreakers for first. They've never lost a tiebreaker to make it through to the quarterfinals. LPL with a pretty good record as well. And the LCS never won a tiebreaker in the world's group stage. They've only oh. actually only ever won one in play-ins. Okay. I think C9 have lost every tiebreaker that they've well, played. You're not filling them with a lot of faith, are you? I mean, C9 <laughs> definitely look like the best team today. So it would truly be some sort of disaster for NA if they're not able to take the win you today. Just, you've <laughs> You're just stacking those curses up, aren't you, Medic? <laughs> Let's have a look at this. Inspire looking for a play on Inaugury. No mana there, but Tian is level 6. And Inspire should be aware of that. Sidestep comes through from Han Summer. But I see Trimby roaming up towards top. There's the Destiny as well. Stolen away as Larson looks for Inaugury. Doinby coming in as well. Trimby trying to join the fray, but Tian has actually gotten down to half HP before this really begins. Slicing Maelstrom available for Oda Womne if they try and turn this around. But you can see Trimby trying to battle dance away. Stunned up, Tian. Spectral Moor was dodged there by Odawamne. Han Sama surviving in the 2v1 in the bottom lane. Okay, so the good news for Han Sama is that he's not really losing a huge amount off the back of this. There's no real risk of a dive because of how many people are actually in the top lane. But Larson did end up burning his flash. Tian as well. But because he's level 6 and because he has that ult, there was a real risk of him getting one reset and really snowballing that fight in their favor. So Rogue. They get paranoid, they don't overcommit, and look at Doonby. He's pushing in that mid wave now. He's going to catch a lot of farm, likely get himself a plate. Chris, forget. just can't land those hooks on Han Summer. I mean, the thing with MF is she has so much passive movement speed just from yep. her W that it's actually really difficult. Of course. And, like, Chris struggling a little bit, but uh, no, it's not really his I mean, Han Summer's just dodged, a beast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's well, been practicing DDR before this. Like, well, it's fancy feet, man. Dodged everything. How, how do you even dodge that against the wall there? Absolutely crazy. We'll hit the level six. Larson, you're gonna hit force back. Yeah, we're doing the gonna pick up more fire. I'm surprised that Larson's actually ahead in CS right now. The fact that he has been uh, matching Doonby on some of these roams, I guess that very first roam where Doonby TP'd to top is where yeah. the difference came through. But I'm having a look at the mini map once again. I see Tian eyeing up that top lane. Looks like for now his priority is just getting the Herald on spawn. And given that Larson has to base, doesn't have TP, this should be uncontested. And you imagine that Rogue should look to try and trade a Drake for this. Yeah, FPX probably want to use this up towards that top side. Get Noguri even more gold in his back pocket. Inspired is going to start up the Drake and the control ward to make sure that no one can spot him. Actually might look for a fight down towards the bottom side. In fact, oh, okay. good red buff back towards the Drake. Of course, we are around that second buff spawner time. You can see Inspired's red about to come off cooldown. You can see Tian's blue here as well. So Inspired using a small window here to steal away this red. But if you don't get the Drake off the back of it, it feels like you have lost a little bit of that neutral advantage. Well, let's see what he does next. They're setting up for a dive on the bot lane. No TPs available. Destiny on cooldown as well. Flash exhaust available here for LWX. Though Han Summer gets hooked. There's the exhaust. Han Summer low underneath the tower. Bullet time just outside of tower range. Cataclysm coming out as well as LWX tries to flash away, but the Ignite is ticking. Han Summer just needs a single auto instead. Trimby will take it with the auto himself. Han Summer flashed at the end there because he thought he would get the kill and he would get tower aggro, but.
He ends up using that, and Trimby ends up picking up the kill. Now Tian looking to make the cross map happen in the top side. Larson's on his way up there as well. They're trying to make this a 2v3. There's the Destiny. Slicing Maelstrom coming out. Odo Omne trying to survive, but you just can't survive that dive. It's a heartbreaker for Odo as he gets yes. killed off in the top lane. Huh? Wait, he stole Kennen's ult? Yeah. That's how that works? Yeah. So he becomes Kennen and he can steal his own teammates ult. <laughs> I didn't know that that was I the mean, interaction. It's a cool interaction. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I suppose it makes sense because you do... You possess him. You become the champion. You but, have his items and but, everything. But Tian doesn't get Kennen's ultimate. No. He gets... He has Viega's so ultimate. Really, so what's <laughs> happened there is Tian has done all of you up a favor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what other good old ones? Wait, but now, the quickness, the bullets. But hang on, but oh, that's maybe, the icon okay, of Larson's. Yeah, maybe it's just a visual thing. Maybe it's just a visual thing. Maybe he does have Viega. He oh, has yeah, Viega's yeah, yeah. ultimate. Okay, so here's why. He stole it while Viega was cannon. Okay. So the icon is the icon that Viega would have, which is the cannon ultimate because okay, he's cannon. Okay. But it's actually. Okay. The heart but he breaker. always got. Oh, no, but here's the ultimate. question. Okay, I don't actually know this. I don't know here's either. Here's the question tweet at us. If he uses it before Viego becomes canon again. I don't know. Uh, before Viego becomes Viego again and is still canon, can he use the Slicing Master? No. I don't know, I don't know either. Uh, but now he's got the Heartbreaker and we'll keep our eyes on that. All right. Whew. Well, that was stressful. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look back at this. Odo Omni, he knows that he's in danger. Uh, Larson tries to roam up to try and assist, but Larson can't get in range fast enough. And. While Odo Omni survives for a little while, he isn't quite able to turn it into anything. Really good management of the tower aggro there from FPX. And uh, they're all able to disengage very smoothly. So the gold remains even, the kills remain even. A lot of focus on the top side of the map for FPX, as we talked about in the draft. Meanwhile, a lot of focus on the bot side of the map for Rogue. And let's see what it turns into, because Twisted Fate Ultimate is on cooldown. Larson's is the same. But he will be rotating up first, as we can see. Oh, they'll be going in. They're looking for LWX. There is the bullet time combo, and LWX unable to get to the lantern. It's Odo Omni with the slicing mushroom in the top lane. Nogari's low here. Tian gonna get caught out as well. He has to flash away. Nogari has to be the target here. Cataclysm coming out as well. Doinbi locks in a gold card. Larson's still on the chase. Tian has flashed away, and Rogue continue to look for these kills. Doinbi once again has that gold card in, and uh, Larson will be able to land the chains on Tian. I think that was water walking coming into effect there for Tian. Uh, actually, maybe I'm wrong in that one. But ne nevertheless, Tian was able to disengage from that. Is Inspired? No. Oh, Inspired is looking. But they, they feel like this is a bait, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> There's no way that Doonby just pushes that up without support. TP into the top lane. Odo has Wait TP. Odo has TP. Trimby's on his way as well. Inspired going in, Doinby with a great, oh, that Very was nice. beautiful. That really was so well done there from Doonby and Crisp able to sidestep that one. But let's kind of take stock because what Rogue successfully did there was get a kill in bot lane in the 2v2, which bear in mind, they've played three times now and it is LWX and Crisp that has 2v2 killed Hans and, Tr well, Trimby, they've killed Trimby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this time around, they're finally able to get some revenge as they get kills. Meanwhile, Larson roams up top lane and is actually able to trade uh, back a kill, which means that Rogue are now plus two and are slightly ahead in gold. Of course, this is all gonna be gone the second that this tower ends up dropping and FPX will be able to equalize Destiny it. Coming out. Odo Omni there, Spectral Moor for the stun. Odo able to dodge to the side just in time. If that Spectral Moor had connected, so would he shot blast. And that would have been a very dead cannon. Rift is going to get another charge in here, but with Inspired, it should go down before they can actually take the tower. FPX investing a lot into trying to take this tower. Gold card locked once again. There's no minions there, and FPX will get that extra 600 gold. I think it was worth it for FPX. Yeah. They uh, really make life difficult now for Odo Omni. That wave is now so much longer. And of course, while Rogue are cross-mapping, the overall goal benefit will go into the back pocket of Rogue. This should continue to equalize the gold, though. I think the biggest thing that I'm really starting to see is, and thank you so much for doing this for highlighting the gold, 2K is the gold lead for Han Summer. He is a player that every caster and analyst has talked about for Rogue. And in a lot of games, teams have shut him down, uh, aggressively yeah. shut him down. Now he is poised and ready to carry. He's been given all of the gold. He is miles ahead of absolutely everyone. And when it comes to these team fights, he is going to be someone that you have to keep your eyes on. Han Summer in a position to help Rogue get to the quarterfinals. Remember, he's been to the quarters before. Misfits 2017, he and Alfari on that roster yep. were able to come out and they won the tiebreaker against TSM, I believe. I, believe. The tiebreaker versus I think TSM? it was TSM. I think it was a tiebreaker versus TSM. I seem to remember them playing three games uh, and then they were able to come out on top.
He may find himself in another tiebreak against NA if he can come out on top of this game. But FBX still very close in gold. Noggery, the main benefactor of that with the Jace, working towards his second item with the Eclipse already finished. Tian also with the Divine Sundra done. And Stopwatch now grabbed and ready to go for doing the level 11s are going to be coming through soon. That means level 2 in a lot of ultimates. And violence will soon ensue, is what I imagine. It's what we hope for as well, watching this game. Basically even right now, Inspire's going to take this Drake. A little bit delayed from the time the Rift Elder's being done on the other side of the map. But now actually Trimby and Hans Summer in the vicinity, in the area, to spot out if this Rift Herald had been started again. First items across the board, Gale Force for both the AD carries, Everfrost for both the mid laners. And the first discrepancy we see is in that jungle. Gore Drinker to a Divine Sundra for Tian. Sorry, I was just thinking about, imagine if Silas did get Cannon on, and they had two Cannon on. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that would be pretty broken. <laughs> yeah, that would be. I had a look at the uh, the Spectator client when it was in the replay, and it showed Heartbreak the entire time. Okay, so it okay, showed... Okay, okay. Show Diego that makes more time. sense to it me. It does to me as well, but it's not an interaction you often think about or you often see. As FTX look to push in this bottom lane, Tian and Nuguri have been by each other's sides the entire game long. Yes, and it's just have. what they've been doing. They've been looking for these towers. They've been looking to crack through the defenses of Rogue, and they continue to chip away at that bot lane tier one. Rogue will get the Rift Herald after getting the Infernal as well, though, so that's two neutrals over to them, and Larson should just retreat from this situation. Just a fair ultimate going to be used top lane. I was just going to say that Han Summer, he's pushing towards this mid tower. The thing he has to be the most careful of is that destiny from Doombi. Um, but now that that's gone, this actually opens him up to be more aggressive in the mid lane if he wants to. But instead, he's going to path up towards top. One of the crazy things about NF is you already mentioned it earlier, her insane movement speed. Uh, makes it much easier for her to rotate from lane to yep. lane and actually keeping her in mid is uh, can be really valuable because of how quickly you can collapse on side so something to keep note of is Han Summer has been moved into this position have to note FPX are currently up three towers to one because they secured that tier two in the top lane as well they are still even on gold though and, it, and it's because of the difference between the two AD carries Han Summer getting all the plates down bot lane securing that tower as well and more resources being funneled into him he is level 11 right now. He is matching the solo laners because of how much Trimby has roamed, yet Trimby is still a level up over Crisp. He's 191 CS at 16 minutes and 45 seconds. Han Sama wants to make it to quarters. Deary me, he's having an absolute storm of a game so far, but in these later game team fights, it's all about his positioning. He's got one cleanse, he's got one flash, he's got one gale force, and there's a hook, there's a stun card, and there's a spectral more coming for him. So the thing that I will say about team fights is I think that in straight up 5v5, front to back, traditional team fight, Rogue has the stronger comp on me. FPX though have a lot of poke, especially once the rapid fire come through from Do and B. And I imagine that when they're playing around these neutrals, if they even want to, um, they'll try and leverage this poke before a fight actually even starts. But I think ideally they want to try and attack the side lanes, as we've pretty much been seeing all day. You know, you push out waves, you have the TF or the J shadow, one or the other, you try and look for picks on side, you try and attack these routes so you don't give your opposition the straight up 5v5. But that's a matter of will FBX respect that and not actually go for these 5v5s uh, at the end of the day. Riftel being put in the mid lane here by Rogue. They want to break this tier one. You can see Odawamne working his way across as well. Of course, now it's not quite as tanky as they are with all of those plates. Riftel will charge, but will fall before they can take down the tower itself. So Rogue still sitting at that one tower. Tian looking for the Spectral more. Doinbi has the destiny if he wants to join this fight. He's meanwhile, it's up in the top lane pushing out that wave. Larson doing the same on the opposite side of the map. And we're pretty symmetrical right here, Betty. The only other thing I wanted to say about team fights before moving on is um, it was Inspired who got a pentakill on Viego yeah. that helped him even get to Worlds in the first place. I mean, it was the reason that they beat Misfits in that yeah. best of five. They were two and two, they were on the losing end, and then Inspired gets the penta. Larson looking for the Heartbreaker, stolen away from Tian. Rest of Rogue on their way as well, but uh, nothing really doing there. Rapid Fire Cannon now complete for Doinby. And the main point that I wanted to make there was that Diego is always that X factor when it comes to team fights. One reset could literally be enough to swing an entire yeah. fight uh, in the favor of FPX. So even though I think on paper, Rogue's comp is stronger in the 5v5, there are these other variables to take into consideration. For now, the gold continues to remain. Even once Odo Omni takes down this tower, we should see the gold pretty much flatline. 
And once again, FBX is trying to play towards their strong side of the map. They're working towards the tier two. Now they're looking for a pick on the Larson. TP coming in. There's a gold card looking for Larson as Trimby dives onto the back line with the quickness. Nogri has to flash away. Ignite ticking, slicing Maelstrom coming out. The Rocky Bell not able to get him in range. But Doing B has to pop the stopwatch, and there's the first reset. Hans Summer has the bullet time. Hans Summer has the flash. Gale Force for the execute. A double for Hans LWX opens the curtains. But Hans Summer's looking to shut them down with a bullet time. Tiad has to flash away. The chase is on. Inspired now joins the fray. And that is four kills for one in favor of Rogue. And just like that, Hans Summer, the assassin AD carry, comes out of nowhere right behind FPX and shuts them down. 3-0-4 is now the scoreline for him. Oh, hang on. LWX can probably do this. Gale Force, that's enough. But I, I, what oh, does it cost? Oh. <laughs> LWX has flash, has exhaust, puts the exhaust down. Hans Summer looking for the damage from the side, but remember, he has no gap closer here. However, Larson is on his way. LWX will flash <laughs> and get dumped in the river. Everfrost coming out here as they try and turn it back on to, uh, to Jace. Nogui has to flash away. Shock blast. Not quite enough damage to kill off the Jace. That, that is. Wow, okay, so Rogue is going to choose to disengage, not overcommit for that Drake. But let's have a look back at this play and this new Axe Effect replay. So FBX is just playing around the side lanes. We've talked about it pretty much all game. They're looking for a pick because they think Larson's overextended. He's able to disengage. Then Trimby commits because they know, look at the minimap. You can see that Han Summit is making his way over and how quickly he's able to collapse. Then when the fight initially looks like it's going in favor of FBX, flashes over the wall, Gale Force into Auto Auto, immediately turns the fight in their favor. Hans Summer does not want to get knocked out of the World Championship just yet, and he is doing everything in his power to turn it around. Huge props to obviously the other members of Rogue to set that one up for Hans to knock it right down. As part of that Rogue squad last year that went one and five, a lot of people criticized them just as a roster for a disappointing showing here. They came into a group by many people seen as done before a game had even been played. Everyone was saying, Don one FPX make it through. Rogue and C9 have had other things to say. Of course, FPX still have the opportunity. Dumb one. 6-0. They're definitely the best of the four. But Rogue and C9 are trying to fight back for the West. And uh, of course, if Rogue can win this, they will face C9 in the final match of the group. I mean, that's one perspective too, right? Should Rogue win this matchup? An NA or EU team is guaranteed in the quarterfinals, you know? No airport speed runs for <laughs> us, lads. Let's go. The West. You know, oh <laughs> sevens in chat, you know what I mean? <laughs> Sorry, is one team in quarterfinals enough to us to say the West has risen up once? No, it's not. I didn't say that. It's just the okay, West just... is not that bad. <laughs> Gap is closing. <laughs> no, it's not. It's just, you know. Anyway, focusing back in on this game, it's obviously not completely over yet for FPX. They're only about two and a half K gold down. Uh, the problem they have is that they are looking down the barrel of a Han Summer who is level 13 working towards his Infinity Edge. Uh, and Larson, who, to his credit, 302 is also very strong himself. Not quite 257 CS, 22 minutes strong, but definitely very strong. You just feel like FBX is playing on the back foot because this whole composition relies on trying to attack the side lanes. Yep. And they haven't really been able to do that. You can see that Nogari, while he is still very strong, I don't think he's at I can 1v9 this game levels of strong. And no, no, has no sums. He tries to get out with the Gale Force, but you can't dodge across the wall. You're locked in there with Inspired and locked in there with Rogue. Rogue now, a man advantage could turn to the Baron. Nogari doesn't have TP either. Remember, he used it in the mid lane. We saw that little scrap with Larson, and I think that FPX are either going to have to try and fight this three versus five or give it up completely. Tian still in position to perhaps steal. Has the smite, no flash on him. Trimby's going to go across. Blast cone there. Trimby in a good position with the quickness here to dive in. Rogue starts to disengage. Inspired. EQ combo available for him. They keep the Baron aggroed for the moment. Nogari now has worked his way up from the top side. There's the Everfrost on to Trimby. Pops the stopwatch. Baron down to two and a half thousand. Trimby dodging away. Rogue looking to burn through the Baron. Tian gets in, but Rogue get it. Inspired secures it. Tian jumped in and out. They couldn't quite take the Baron away. And now he might look for a little bit of this fight. Could try and stop it back. Doesn't manage to do it. Wow, that was risky though. Flipping that Baron versus Tian was a very dangerous thing to do for Rogue, but taking some inspiration from Darmon earlier in the day, leveraging the Misfortune Ultimate to burst it down to make it that much harder, Inspired was able to secure it. And now with the Baron buff, Rogue find themselves with a 4,000 gold lead in prime control to take the first tiebreaker. The winner of this game will go up against Cloud9. But now with the Baron buff, Rogue is looking to break into the base. 
Could be a problem with this Shirelli is there in the middle lane, perhaps wondering if he could catch out Duimbi. Inspired in a good position to the side once again, Cataclysm just off cooldown. Mid lane tier two is forfeit as Rogue push into it. Nuggery and Doinby trying to defend, but they can't do it. And meanwhile, Odawamne has a wave stack down towards the bottom lane if Rogue want to rotate across there. They'll likely keep one or two people in the mid lane, or oh, actually, Oh, interesting. Okay, so they'll just let Odoamne solo push it down towards the bot side of the map. Typically, you would just want to keep, as exactly you're seeing on your screen right now, Han, Sama, and Trimby around mid to instantly clear out this wave so that when the next wave comes in, they can Baron power it up and FPX is forced to catch it without any sort of leverage, which gives Rogue the opportunity to reset. They get themselves two quick towers and they can spend some of the gold that they've just acquired. Infinity Edge now being finished. The Starax also in the back pocket of Inspired and it looks like Odoamne working towards his death cap as well. Two more towers over to Rogue FPX. Trying to find a way back into this game. As you said, their power is side lanes, but Rogue haven't really had to meet them in the side lane. A lot of the time it's been LWX getting caught out in these last couple of plays. And because the Cataclysm alongside the flag and drag combo from Inspired gives you such a long range engage, very difficult for L LWX to survive. But I mean, just look at the levels, right? Like, if FBX was a team fight right now, Doonby is two levels down. Yep. Yes, he does have three items, but those levels matter. And Larson is so much stronger and will offer so much more in the 5v5. Now, Jace is trying to split push in the bot lane, but he's going to be forced to recall as Rogue now knock on the doors of FBX's base. And a minion there, barrened up on Summer. Takes a chunk down to about a thousand. Odoamne pushing in the mid lane as well, and it looks like Rogue will want to reset before this dragon would be their third of the game. A mountain soul on the horizon for them. In the back, they're going to get their wards, and then they're going to walk back on towards the map. You can see control wards, three of the inventories. Sorry, I just I was looking at the inventories and I see Zonya's stopwatch, Zonya's stopwatch <laughs> on the side of Rogue. <laughs> And you know you want to know why FPX are losing this game? Yeah, because not enough no stopwatches. On, one, one Zonya's no stopwatches. As Trimby looks for the quickness engage here in the middle lane. Bullet time coming out. Noggery is able to survive. TP's coming out from Rogue as well at the moment. It's a 3v5. Hunt Summer low. Tian trying to kill him off. Trimby kills off LWX. Cataclysm coming out, but Doinby onto Hunt Summer on the back line. It has to be what you have to watch, but instead, Odoamne doesn't care about Doinby. He just slices through FPX. And now Rogue. Four members strong, Baron buff expired, could look to push down these inhibitors. A huge flank from Odo Omne comes in and he is able to melt through the lineup of FPX. He's finally able to dish back some of the punishment that he experienced in the early game. And FPX falls short once more. Three members dead. Rogue will finally be able to break into the base. Doombi and Chris trying to defend here as Rogue push forward. Minions in the mid lane will help Larson with that back door. Uh, without the backdoor bonus, obviously Tian now up in four seconds. No inhibitors fall here for FBX. The dragon wasn't taken either, so Rogue don't have that soul on the way. However, Baron up in two minutes time, maybe Rogue will want to play around that. And now Rogue just gonna steal away everything. Initially, this fight didn't actually look all that bad for FBX. Look at Hansa. Oh, wow, forces the flash out from Nogri. No reliable engage actually comes through from Trimmy. He's perma cc Hansa takes a lot of damage, but then here comes Odoamne with a huge ultimate to just provide so much CC, so much damage. Inspired with the lockdown on the ultimate, and then Doonby using his ultimate to get out of danger to prevent Han Sama from securing himself another kill. So very well played team fight from Rogue. And again, you're seeing how difficult it is for FBX to just play the straight up front to back team fight, especially when that Kennen is able to get onto the back line. Yeah, my eyes were all focused on Han Sama. I'm like, he's the key carry for Rogue. And Odo Amnes has other plans. Slicing Mouse from still does a lot of work, even if you are not as far ahead as this AD carry. Almost a flame horizon for Han Sama over LWX. A couple more CS would get to that point. Mounted Drake now taken by Rogue. A 6,000 gold lead. And it's going to be a very difficult walk here for FPX to get back on into this game. And what a shocker yeah. for FPX. Because so many people have already said it, but they were considered tournament favorites. I remember seeing, like, even I, my rating was FPX, Dom1, and EDG as top three. Same with RNG being the big dark horse. You know, it was one of these four teams, in my opinion, that was going to win the World Championship. And when people saw this group, everyone believed that FPX and Darmon would be fighting for first. Yep. Similar to what we saw last year, when it was Darmon and JDG, and they took games off of each other. Um, but they have not performed to the level that they expected, and now they're making a play to try and get back in. Larson uses the stopwatch, flashes away from the Everfrost, can be stunned up with the gold card, Inspired's on the way. Oduwamne has a flank position here as well, and the counter destiny has been used. Can be going in, looking for Doinby, quickness used, and there's Cataclysm onto Noggery on the back line. And meanwhile, Noggery just can't do anything. Locked up in place. Rogue able to find two more kills. 
And that Baron looking very juicy 20 seconds away. It certainly is, Medic. FPX, they tried to go for a pick on a side lane. Larson is able to navigate his way out of that situation. And even if they wanted to fight, it was never going to be good. LWX, nowhere near the fight. It was always going to be 5v4. Rogue extend their goal lead to 7,000. And with the Baron in their sights, it is unlikely that FPX will be able to contest. It's uh, truly a shocker for FPX, as you say. However, Tian does still have Flash, does still have Smite, does still have the Heartbreak to get into the pit. Everfrost to try and keep him away here. Larson trying to keep that jungler at bay. Oduwemli locked up, Slicing Mouse from coming out. Chris almost down. Oduwemli posts the stopwatch. Larson training on to Tian as well. The Heartbreak is coming out, but the resets just aren't quite there. Tian will fall. Larson and Rogue will get the Baron. Two kills down. TP coming in. As uh, Nogui and Doinbi going to join this fight. They might actually look to take down this mid lane tier two before Rogue can react. Remember that they do have a numbers advantage here with a wave right behind them. They could keep pushing this if they wanted to, but instead they're not going to take the gamble with Inspired, Larson and Hans are all still up and alive. It looks like that they're just going to back off. Rogue will secure themselves the Baron. Frozen Heart coming through from Inspired. I quite like that. With so many auto attackers on the side of FPX. Offering that little bit of attack speed reduction, always very nice. And especially if you're jumping right on top of them. Yep. The GA now also completed for Han Summer, level 16. He's a higher level than Dune. 345 CS at 30 minutes. Uh, an incredibly impressive game from the AD carry from Rogue. A really an impressive tournament yeah. overall from him. And now he's level 17. No, he's just higher than every member. He's higher than everyone but everyone Larson. Everyone yeah. Larson. That's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, he has been funneled this game. That is true. Uh, definitely, you can see Oduwamne sitting at 240 CS. Uh, about 60 behind Noguri. Uh, but right now, Lich Bane finished for Doinby. FBX on their last legs. One last defense, one last hope for the LPL in this game. Inspired, looking for that position to get in. Oracle's pop to clear out this ward. Gold card locked for Doinby, but he's going to be able to find his mark yet. Hunt Summer, no cleanse on him. Well, no QSS, it has the cleanse. As the bot lane inhibitor tower, Rogue's target with this Baron buff. Bullet time coming out. Nogri forced back to base. Hook lands onto Trimby. Only on Summer heals up from the minion wave. Larson and Oduwamne chunk to half. However, with the Baron up minions pushing in, Rogue will look to take their first inhibitor of the game. Tian is going to step forward and Rogue will take it and back away. Wave's not in the best of spots in mid and top for them to go and get another one. Instead, it looks like they're going to reset. Well, I think the biggest thing is that Dragon spawns in mid time. And uh, we are approaching, well, late game. And if they die, those death times are quite long. And there's a real chance that they could lose out on the Baron and give FPX another way back into the game. So they just said, you know what? With only a minute left on this Baron, let's just create a little bit of pressure. We've taken down the bot in here. We've created a source that FPX have to deal with. And now we can attempt another push at towards the second inhibitor. Also play some wards in that red side jungle in case a dragon fight starts. Oduwamne, no TP on him, but Larson could look for a flank play if FBX decides to push out that way. Look at this as well. Rogue trying to steal absolutely everything away from FBX in their half of the jungle as well. Continuing to deny these small, smaller neutral objectives in the blue and the red. Baron now. Baron. Uh, dragon, 15 seconds. And this area of the map does not belong to FBX. You see, walking into darkness, placing the ward over the wall there. Crisp just trying to get some vision. Uses the Oracles as well to sweep out as they step forward. Larson is not with the team right here. Destiny coming out to keep Rogue eyes on. The FBX know that they have a man advantage for a moment until this TP comes in. Larson's going to join the fray. Oda one may has Flash, has Slicing Mouse, has the stopwatch. Noin B has the gold card locked in. Mountain. That's a lot of wards in the pit. We're going to look to pull this one out. Bot Wave is continuing to push in. Destiny is on cooldown. Spire tries to get into this push without being seen, but he is spotted. Tian only level 14 here, but of course Smites equalize at 900 damage. Curtains open. Hans Summer takes one, takes two. There's the quickness onto the back line. He's looking for the charm. And then look just to burst down Doinby. And the bullet time means die, Phoenix, die. Doinby will fall. Larson dives onto the back line as well. And there is the damage onto LWX. Odo with the shutdown. Chris trying to get into the middle of Rogue, but he just can't do enough. It's a clean ace for Rogue as they make their way to the tiebreakers. Five still alive for Rogue. Five 
dead on the former world champions of FPX. Their world championship run will end right now as Rogue continue to advance in the tiebreakers to face Cloud9 for a spot in the quarterfinals. Once more into the breach, my friends. Once more, Rogue have one more opportunity, one shot to make it to quarters. FPX are knocked out of Worlds 2021. And such a massive comeback win for Rogue. They have looked shaky throughout the entire group stage, but Hansama was unleashed in this game. Larson was able to match any of the early pressure that Duanby was trying to throw out. And in the team fights, it was Rogue that came out on top. Huge win for EU, as they will now get one last shot at making it out of Group A, as Rogue and Cloud9 will fight for the final spot. And of course, Cloud9 have had a little bit of extra time to set up a little bit of extra time to watch Rogue play against FBX and we'll be looking hungrily at that quarterfinal spot. They've had an incredible day today, two and one, only losing to Darm one. Cloud9 should be favorites coming into this final game on current form. Certainly should be, but also once again, commiserations to FBX. Yeah. Uh, truly a shocking outcome given the, the expectations, especially with how Doonby has been playing all year, yeah. rated so highly and how could he not be? He looked so incredible. Uh, to then have FPX perform the way that they did is is truly shocking. And of course, the LPL is still a very, very strong region. Still a lot left of the it's tournament. Still probably two of the tournament favorites still in RNG EDG. Two right? of the so. tournament favorites indeed. So quite a shocker. FPX will be knocked out of Worlds as we move into our final tiebreaker to round out Group A. Uh, we're looking forward to that final game of the day. Be sure to check out the new Spotify exclusive podcast, Rift Reaction, hosted by Travis Gafford and Emily Rand. And for the next episode, they want to hear from you. What team with a losing record has the best shot at making the bracket stage? Well, our <laughs> Joe, Ro Rogue or C9. Head to Rift Reaction on Spotify and select the latest episode to submit your answer. Listen in on the next episode of Rift Reaction on Tuesday. With that win, Rogue stay alive at World, World